So, doing a live stream and we're talking about how to use device profiles to improve anti-aliasing. And it doesn't seem like a lot of people know about these. So when you build a project, uh, let's go to tools, if I can remember where it is, platforms, device profiles. You have these profiles which essentially get built when you create your app. So if you build an app to the, like, the MetaQuest, you can customize what goes on in here. For some reason, my machine's been a little bit slow. But for example, what we can do is we can scroll right down and you see that we actually have a section for Quest, Quest 2, Quest 3, uh, Quest Pro and then Quest 3, sorry. And these kind of back onto each other. So if we go to MetaQuest and we open this up. We say select the parent, it's going to be MetaQuest Pro. So this profile is built on top of this profile, which is the MetaQuest Pro and the MetaQuest Pro is built on top of the Oculus Quest 2 profile. So depending on what platform you're targeting or what you're working with, you're going to want to change the settings in your device profile. Um, if you change it on the base layer, so the like Oculus Quest 1, for example, it will affect all the other ones in the hierarchy. So if I open up the MetaQuest 3 and we have a look at console variables, we haven't got any in here, actually. It should be. So we can see the inherited. That's going to be a better, actually, better view. You can see all the console variables, which are set by default for us. Stuff like mobile content scale factor, so that's your screen resolution when it's on screen. Set to 1. If you want to increase that density for the VR, you would change that to 1.5 or 1.2. The higher the number on that, it's good, the worse it's going to get. And ears and quality, quality is set to 4. You would probably set that to a level 2, actually, because I think it aligns with it. Or you can actually override them. For example, on the MetaQuest Pro one, we could go to rendering. And then we could search in here for anti-aliasing. So anti-aliasing method, and you can hover over it and you see here that by default, we want to target multi-sample anti-aliasing. So MSAA3, MSAA, which is number three. So we click that and then we set it. You can see that defaults to three. And then we could do anti-aliasing, mobile anti-aliasing. And you can see that we can kind of go through and add these in and it will override the ones that we have from the parent essentially. So if we keep going through this and then search for something like pixel, if I'll spell it correctly, mobile, that's the right one. It's because they changed it, I can't remember what it's called. But basically we can look at the inherited and we can see what's in here. So mobile content scale factor, we could go in in here. So we can tell that by mobile content scale factor is, so that's rendering. So rendering, so r dot mobile content scale factor, we can put this in and it's one by default and then we could actually change this. So now if we do 1.5, our screen resolution when we build to the headset is gonna be sharper, but you're gonna have an impact on. So you need to kind of keep that in mind as you go through and add these in. And you've got stuff like VR pixel density, round robin occlusion, dynamic foveation, which is turned off by default. And then what you'll have as well is your project settings will override some of the stuff in here as well. So it's just kind of like a balancing act for what you've got set up. But the device profiles can work really well for getting more resolution and then improving what you've got. So anti aliasing quality, for example, we can select that one in here now. And then anti aliasing quality is currently set to epic. So we could use that. And then you've got quality number levels. And you can pretty much just go through and add whatever console commands you want to the actual profile and go from there. And it'll just make, make it so when you build it, all of these are applied. And then you'll be able to have more resolution and more control of what's going on in your project. So stuff like reflect, reflection quality. So E, which is going to be scalability group. So SG dot reflection. Reflection quality, we can hover over this and you can see that reflections, because they're expensive by default, they're currently set to one. So reflection quality set to one, we might want to put that up to three if we got the performance to do that. And then you could override it that way. So defaults to three. Texture quality, you can bring that up. View distance, you can see as well. Shadow quality is set to zero by default, which is why when you build a game, shadows look absolutely terrible on the quest. Is because by default, it's set to zero. Journey quality is good resolution quality pretty much all of those should match if you're doing it this way uh, so the the resolution quality and then you have the i've lost it already the pixel density is what i'm looking for but either way hopefully that kind of tells you what you should be looking for for example scalability group the effects quality so vfx is set to zero so it's quite low 
So you're not going to have the best performance on. You'll have a better performance, but it won't look as good as what it could be. And then foliage quality is already set to one, so we can look for foliage in here. To foliage quality, and then we say okay, anything with foliage is currently set to low by default. So where is it? Keep losing them. How did I just have it and then I can't see it? Am I that blind? I went to get glasses last week and I've got to wait for them to be delivered now. Is it because I added them? Yeah, right. So because I added it, it overrid it and it removed it from the list, which I completely forgot about. But you can see how going through this, you can be in more control of your project without having to put console commands inside of your level blueprints or your actual player or anything like that and then calling it. So definitely play around with these, keep it in mind. And then if you don't want anything and you want it to default back, you can just X on these and then you'll be able to remove it. The only problem with this is, for example, I'm doing this in the Unreal project, or the, the GDXR template. If I make changes here, you guys wouldn't get them. It would be on the machine. So keep that in mind if you're moving projects from one to another. It seems to be more local. And then what you can do is you could close this, and then you could do save as default. And then when you build, it will try and use that device profile when you launch the headset, when you launch the app on the headset. And it can just give you way more control and better quality of your, your projects, really. So if you're trying to improve anything in your game rendering wise, such as the anti-aliasing or render distance or pixel quality, make sure to check these out as it can do quite a bit of work and then it can make it a lot better for you. But yeah. All right. I'll leave that there and I'll upload this one as a standalone video. And that way, if anybody wants to go back through it, they should be able to, which will make life a little bit easier for you all. But hopefully that helps.